it would be glorious to watch Mr. Beast get proven guilty and arrested over this. This is one of the comments and I read it post that alleges Mr. Beast has all along been involved in scams, widespread fraud and manipulation in the cryptocurrency markets. And this is illegal. It turns out Mr. Beast has made tens of millions from his participation in the various pump and dump schemes. So me and Logan both bought punks. You guys have probably seen on his Twitter that uh, he bought a bunch of crypto punks. Mr. Beast is the charity guy whose name is on the website. It's Mr. Beast's branding. Sold tokens one month after starting a two month NFT auction for charity. Okay, Everyone's Gary. Judging. I'm texting Logan. <laughs> He's I'm like, like, is this, is this legit? <laughs> for all of us, we're like, yo, Gary's nuts. What Mr. Beast did, what his team did is shady. Alongside two massive crypto grifters, Logan Paul. Cryptozoo.co. I am so excited about this project. It's 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 so fun. It's a really fun game that makes you money. How much did you guys make from CryptoZoo? I lost around fifty thousand dollars in CryptoZoo. I lost forty thousand dollars. I lost around fifteen thousand US dollars. I lost twenty five thousand dollars. One hundred twenty thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars Australian, which is half a million in CryptoZoo. Shut up! No, you haven't. And KSI. KSI is one of the world's most popular YouTubers, but yesterday he accidentally exposed the pump and dump crypto scams that he promoted. I'm holding my bags. <laughs> I'm holding my Luna, my X cards. <laughs> Videos like this are why people genuinely thought KSI was just buying and holding, but he wasn't. Is it unfair to say the man who has given away millions of dollars, cured the sick, healed the blind, rescued the dogs, saved the environment. YouTube's golden boy is equally a crypto grifter. In my quest to answer these questions, I discovered several fraud and scams that Mr. Beast has been participating in. Trust me, you won't believe what I found out. Mr. Beast first rose to prominence in 2017. His videos involved giving away large sums of money. And by 2021, Mr. Beast had become the most watched YouTuber in the world. And as of today, he has the most subscribed channel in the world. Mr. Beast was not only entirely focused on making videos, he started getting involved in other different ventures. One of Mr. Beast's most controversial ventures was his 2020 mobile app competition, Finger on the App. Contestants were instructed to keep their finger on their phone screen, with the last person remaining winning a hundred thousand dollar prize. However, so many contestants complained about the competition. If someone were to scroll through the user reviews for the application today, they would find a plethora of angry players who claim to have been unfairly eliminated. Hey Ziri, I appreciate the- Oh my god! I don't know what that means. Bruh. Are you f***ing kidding me? Players reported being kicked out of the game for no reason. And there were allegations that Mr. Beast's team had manipulated the app to eliminate the people before the end of the contest. Some participants claimed that the prize was never actually paid out to them. Mr. Beast responded to the complaints. He apologized for the technical issues, but many fans were left questioning whether was it just a poorly executed idea or it was a larger scam. In 2020, Mr. Beast expanded into the food industry. I just need to figure out how to make more money so I can fund all this right. stuff. And so that's kind of what got me started on, on doing this. And um, I also, I'm just very passionate about food in general. He launched Mr. Beast Burger, a delivery only restaurant that quickly gained popularity. He then followed up with Fista Balls that promised to be a game changer. However, what appeared to be Another entrepreneurial success story turned into a series of failures and frauds. At first, Mr. Beast Burger's launch was met with excitement, but many customers were disappointed by the quality. They complained about the cold food, incorrect orders, and long delivery times. A huge wave of negative comments poured on social media, with many 
calling the operation a cash grab instead of a genuine food venture. This is what the Impossible Beast style burger is supposed to look like. And this looks like if somebody drew a burger for me? How is this real? It looks like a Krabby Patty. And it didn't stop there. Mr. Beast's Fistable Chocolate Bars originally marketed as a healthier alternative I wanted to just make a better for you snack break because I think a lot of the stuff out there is just terrible for you. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. Like Hershey's for example, there's 10 ingredients, super processed. Our, our Fusils bars are five ingredients and just all the ingredients are way higher quality. And it's infinitely better than the other options out there. Got a makeover in 2024. Fans were quick to notice that the formula had changed to prioritize taste over health. Critics even accused Mr. Beast of rigging the chocolate blind tests to favor his product while excluding major competitors like Hershey's. As I watched the video, I noticed something. Everything from the placement of the chocolates to the order in which they were eaten was designed to get Feastables to be the winner. Pretty suspicious if you ask me. One of the most controversial aspects of Feastables was how Mr. Beast encourage his fans to promote it. Fans were told to share social media posts about Feastables, moving other products around in stores to make room for the new brand. They were excited to support their favorite creator, but soon realized they were doing most of the marketing work for him. But it didn't end there. In September 2024, Mr. Beast teamed up with Logan Paul and KSI to launch Lunchly, a healthier alternative to Lunchables. But people quickly slammed it for being highly processed and unhealthy for kids. YouTube stars are coming for your kids' lunch. It's a move that has Mr. Beast, Logan Paul, and KSI teaming up to take on lunch. And saying and a food has more electrolytes, therefore it must be better or healthier, just not true. Foods with an incredibly high sodium content and electrolyte are not considered particularly healthy. Back in 2017, Mr. Beast was tied to a suspicious giveaway channel called Clash Hub. Some said it was a scam with Mr. Beast's name linked to it. In a video seven years ago, he reported some evidence showing Mr. Beast's link to the Clash Hub scam. Evidence linking Mr. Beast to the Clash Hub giveaway primarily revolves around claims made by various YouTube commentators and the analysis of the giveaway structure. For example, people noted that Mr. Beast's distinctive voice was recognizable in the Clash Hub live stream. Additionally, footage from the stream showed a table and a setup similar to those used in Mr. Beast's own videos. Observers also claimed that the giveaways was pre-recorded rather than live. This was evidenced by a lack of real-time like interaction with the viewers. Also during is one part of the stream, Mr. Beast's tweet So the first thing that was Twitter, off, when the tweet was posted, the stream went on and there were no interruptions. Which further proves the point as he can't be scratching the gift cards and be tweeting at the exact same time. This supported the claims that the live stream was staged. But a significant piece of evidence involved referral codes that was linked to the promotion app mentioned during the stream. Why didn't Clash Hub change the referral code of Free My App so he could make money and not have all the money go to Mr. Beast? I'll let you come to your own conclusion. The similarity raised questions about whether could Mr. Beast have been part of this scam or was this another case of bad business decision? Mr. Beast is probably just one of the many doing the exact same thing as a way to make a few extra bucks in this YouTube ad crisis. Just when things seemed to come down, a new controversy exploded in 2024. A YouTuber named Dog Park 404 revealed Mr. Beast merchandised, advertised as signed by Mr. Beast himself, was actually being signed by his team members. So here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs MB, which is Mr. B's signature. Then he covers it, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? Fans were outraged. They felt betrayed. It almost felt like they were scammed into paying high price for the match, expecting to get authentic signatures. I'm disappointed. My son bought a signed shirt and was so excited. He watched the live stream and saw that people who bought would receive $100. He was excited to win something and be a part of his favorite streamer, Mr. Beast. 
When the shirt arrived, he was grinning from ear to ear. When he realized that there was no hundred dollars, he was visibly disappointed. He said nothing other than, I guess he meant everyone except me. He loves his shirt, but I'm really upset seeing him hurt. In the world of cryptocurrency, there are so many scumbags and grifters. In 2017, Mr. Beast admitted to gambling large sums of money in crypto. I gambled 10 Ethereum on a coin flip and I lost. And I haven't gambled since. I've decided I'm not going to spend the rest of my life sad and about my losses. I'm just going to let it go and never gamble again. It's been two and a half months since I last gambled and I don't ever plan on doing it again. In this old Reddit post, he went on to say he had bought a warehouse for mining. I run a cryptocurrency mining company and I've already made six figures of these coins. I don't know what you mean by seems all you want to do is to get rich quick. I genuinely love cryptocurrencies. I think they'll change the world over the next decade. Perhaps the most allegations involves Mr. Beast being involved in crypto pump and dump schemes. A pump and dump scheme refers to artificially inflated value of an asset through misleading promotions only to sell off one's holding at the peak, leaving other investors with the devalued assets. Mr. Beast may have had access to insider information regarding upcoming projects and partnership which would have given him an unfair advantage to trading these cryptocurrencies. In 2017, Mr. Beast became associated with the Refinable token. Mr. Beast followed the Refinable project on Twitter, which has been interpreted as a form of endorsement. Mr. Beast allowed his brand to be used in the promotions for Refinable. This included promotional graphics that featured his likeness, suggesting that the project leveraged his popularity to attract investors. After Mr. Beast's association with the Refinable became public, the token experienced a significant increase in value, only to subsequently drop by approximately 99.97%. This decline has led to speculation that Mr. B's involvement may have been part of the broader pattern of market manipulation, a characteristic of pump and dump schemes. After the token's value tanked, many investors lost big. And although crypto is risky, a lot of people felt as if they were being scammed. But either way, Jimmy never went against this site using his likeness for their marketing and he appeared to have been fine with it. So is he a grifter? So me and Logan both bought punks. You guys have probably seen on Twitter that uh, he bought a bunch of crypto punks at the same time, right? Yeah. A crucial piece of evidence comes from a podcast that featured Logan Paul, Mr. Beast, and KSI. Now, during the conversation, Mr. Beast narrates an incident where he participated in a call arranged by Gary V involving multiple high net worth individuals and influential figures. The purpose of the call was to buy and promote CryptoPunks, an NFT project. Mr. Beast account of the event raises eyebrows as it seemingly describes a coordinated effort to inflate the value of an asset potentially leading to a financially beneficial sell-off for those involved. This behavior is a true definition of pump and dump. In 2023, Mr. Beast was involved in the Creator League. Yes. Mr. Beast released his latest video and it was a banger. As always. And as with every video, Mr. Beast throws in an ad with this one being creatorly, and it wasn't sponsored, but promoted. Mr. Beast actively promoted the Creator League in his videos, where he encouraged the viewers to purchase the Creator League community passes for $20. These passes were marketed as providing fans with the voting rights, VIP experiences, and opportunities to win prizes. Although Mr. Beast did not mention NFTs in his promotions, the Creator League passes were technically NFTs on the near protocol blockchain. This back-end use of NFT technology was not made clear to potential buyers. That led to a significant backlash. The controversy intensified when Connor C. Dog VA, a prominent creator involved in the league, publicly withdrew from the project upon learning about its NFT component. Is this it? So I'll just be real with you guys. I accepted to join the Creator League not fully understanding the tech behind it. 
Needless to say, with the current information available, I'm planning on withdrawing. I'm not a part of this, guys. All right, cool. We're, so me and you, we're not a part of that? Well, essentially, they told nobody, so. Oh. Okay, well, how did that, how did, okay. Following Sea Dog's announcement, the Crater League sales were halted, and the project was postponed shortly after its announcement. Till today, the exact date when this project will return is not known. So, the people bought into the project has been scammed. In October 2024, an article appeared online. It detailed an investigation that links Mr. Beast to over $23 million in profits from potential insider trading in the cryptocurrency market. The findings were posted by the advisory firm Lock. Dot io with on-chain investigations tracking mr beast activities across more than 50 cryptocurrency wallets tied to the various cryptocurrency tokens which is illegal many of these tokens have now lost 90 percent of their value with some of them rebranding after massive losses in particular mr beast invested a hundred thousand dollars in the super farm dao project using his influence he allegedly helped boost the project's token super super to a 1.42 dollar token before selling his stake he converted his super holdings into ether routing the funds through multiple wallet and securing over over 9 million in profits. Beyond Super Farm, Mr. Beast is also accused of promoting and then selling off tokens from projects. One wallet associated with Mr. Beast invested $25 in Pokemon tokens and later sold it for $1.3 million. Mr. Beast was also linked to a pre sale allocation of Ethanity Chain ERN tokens. Mr. Beast acquired additional tokens and transferred them between different wallets. Shortly after these transfers, the tokens were sold for a combined profit of $1.83 million, with Mr. Beast personally making $2.97 million from his allocated tokens. Mr. Beast's name was put publicly on the Eternity Chain website. On their investors and partners page, he got into the pre-sale and the Yearn team also claims that he partnered with them for an NFT drop. We listed him, Mr. Beast, as a partner and quote, yes, they accepted that. He's also involved in various NFTs, including CryptoPunks, which he sold for a substantial return and he reinvested into Gary V's NFTs, the V Friends. <laughs> Dude, he's on to the next thing. I bought a bunch of, so then I rolled the money into V Friends because I Gary, same thing, called me. He's like, V Friends. I was like, I don't know, but last time I made money, sure, sure. Others include the stock that he made $1.31 million from it, Jig stock and IOZ that he made about 1 million profits from it. The investigators were able to track the wallet movements due to the public Ethereum wallet historically used by Mr. Beast for NFT purchases. This allowed them to connect various transactions across different wallets linked to his network. However, the exact identities of individuals managing each wallet are not clear. There are other new schemes, frauds, and possible scams that has recently still been promoted by Mr. Beast. In one of his recent videos, he claimed to have opened a store with one of the dead companies. Right, get this. The tunnel was so long, we literally had to run down Still it. going. This is the longest tunnel I've ever seen in my life. I see the light. And at the end of the tunnel, I built a Zaxby's. I wonder why is he going on trying to resurrect every dead company and push out all sorts of new products to the people. Isn't it another new form of fraud coming up?